there, Splunk Ninjas. Uh, we here at Animal Logic are obviously big fans of Splunk, and we just wanted to spend a couple minutes today talking about why we think we go together like peanut butter and chocolate. So if you don't know who we are, Anvil Logic is a SaaS cybersecurity software company that has built a detection engineering and hunting platform specifically for enterprise SOC teams. So we help you implement more accurate detections in a few clicks and ideally help you hunt more efficiently and effectively irrespective of whatever security tools you have and whatever data lake or data lakes you may have in place. So with that out of the way, we're gonna cover three things today. Um, we think that these three things are particularly important and oftentimes complex or onerous for even the best Splunk teams. So the first one is that detection creation itself is just, it's hard to do, right? It's hard to build, test, and deploy. It's all the safe searches you need to cover your detection gaps. Um, Lifecycle management is also tricky, right? So not just deploying them the first time, but versioning them, uh, fixing them, and tuning them. And then the last piece is actually um, just correlating across those alerts. And we'll talk a little bit about this thing we call um, threat scenarios, which takes advantage of all the work you put into your core atomic testing um, for things, what we call threat indicators, but you may just call them safe searches. So <clears throat> I know there's a lot of stuff on Splunk Base. Um, one of the things that makes Splunk an awesome ecosystem and platform is just the variety of add-ons you can install in apps. Um, and that's the whole point is that when you buy a platform, you get a lot of options that come along with that. But we think we have some something special to offer, and so hopefully you'll, you'll continue watching. So without further ado, let's take our first stop at the Anvil Logic Armory. So the Armory is where our internal purple team builds and publishes content for our users, and you can import that into what we call your workspace and then immediately deploy that to Splunk if you want to. Um, we spend a lot of time investing in threat research. Our detections are mapped to MITRE ATT&CK. We map them to threat actors. You'll see that there's platform-specific details on this as well. So all of that metadata, that rich metadata that we invest into tagging our detections with, um, really helps you sort of target what detections you can use. And we'll talk a little bit about recommendations as well, but really the idea here is if I wanna go find coverage for cloud, I can go into my threat identifiers, I can pick the domain, pick cloud, and you'll see it filters down, in this case, Azure, we have coverage for AWS, all that good stuff. The other thing though, is that not all detections matter to all users and customers, right? So we also have a recommendation engine, an AI recommendation engine that we try to be really, really transparent about, right? So like the idea here is, it's no magic, it's just math. We figure out, you tell us what's important to you, what platforms you worry about, what industry you're in, um, what data feeds you have in place today. And then we basically pair you up and do sort of matchmaking with the available detections in the armory. And you can see it's very clear. Prioritize techniques that you've picked. Um, you have containers in terms of the platforms that you need coverage for. And for example, you also have WAF logs and those are applicable to this set of detections within that category, so on and so forth. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy to take advantage of. And if you pick a particular detection, what you'll see is you can very quickly add it to your workspace. And then from there, <clears throat> once it's in your workspace, you have this concept of version management. And so once it's there, making an edit super simple, you click edit. You make a couple changes. We'll just say adding a comment. Spelt that wrong. It's okay. You then have a little bit of change history here. Updated logic. And you save it. You also have this concept of save draft story for another time, but immediately you have two buttons, right? You have test and deploy. This allows you to quickly iterate when you're sort of building out detections. That's a very iterative process. You can simply copy the logic, paste it into your Splunk search bar. The other thing is we have that metadata I mentioned before. So examples of the threats, um, specific things like rule severity and risk score. You also can add your custom tags. So <clears throat> obviously we supply you with a bunch of out of the box tags, one of which is technique IDs from MITRE ATT&CK, but um, we have customers that have huge libraries of tags that really are mapped to their people in process, which is super duper important. So once that's saved, obviously, like I'd mentioned, you now have multiple versions. You can even compare it to the public version. So if we ever update what's in the armory with the newer version, maybe we make some changes, attackers change up techniques. This makes it super duper easy to immediately um, take advantage of those updates and compare them to what you have, make the changes you need, and then redeploy immediately on demand. So obviously that's a lot to cover. There's more things to unpack. If you wanna um, talk about that further, you can hit us up on the email. I think that'll be tied to this. But the other thing that's really important is you now have all of these detections out there but how do you curate them? How do you take care of them once they're in the wild? And so obviously we have things like alert mode, but really the key here and one of the things that we consider really important is what we call tuning insights. So tuning insights are tied to all of the detections you deploy. We're constantly picking up metadata about those detections 
and then we will send you automatically on a regular basis what we call tuning insights. And so we always tie it back to that use case, that um, particular sort of bookmark in the armory and, and in your workspace. And we tell you specifically, hey, if you add this to your allow list or you tune out this particular process value, pretty gnarly one here with uh, some, looks like a base 64 encoded PowerShell command, that will save you 31% of the alerts that you're already seeing. And we think it's benign, here's the reasons we think it's benign, so on and so forth. So again, no real like mysterious magic, it's just math, we do all this computation for you and we make it super, super simple to deploy it. So if I accept these insights, I simply say, yep, I want that. And the moment I click update, it actually pushes that down to, to our Splunk app that's sitting on your search head and immediately goes into effect. So you're obviously saving a ton of triage time for your, for your analysts who don't want to deal with a lot of noise if you've already gone through and looked at, or in our case, have given you something to examine and determine if it's safe to go and allow list, right? So that's pretty important and pretty cool. We do this, like I said, across all the rules you deploy constantly. So as you're putting new content out there, as you're revising content, we're constantly updating our models to take advantage of that. So that's a pretty cool one. The other thing, as I mentioned before, that's super duper important is stitching together these atomic detections. So and you go into your workspace, you have all these threat identifiers. And these threat identifiers, like I said, are sort of atomic rules really targeted toward individual techniques or tactics, if we're talking MITRE. But the other way to look at this is stitching those together via scenarios. So you have a bunch of rules, maybe they're deployed in warn mode because they're a little noisy, but if you wanna stitch those together into a more comprehensive story, we also have a no-code builder specifically for that purpose. And as you can see here, you can do something as straightforward and simple as mapping together you know time bound hey between uh, stage one and stage two four hours stage two and three another four hours but maybe you want to add a third stage and it doesn't require any spl knowledge whatsoever i can then pick something like hey if i see exfiltration after the fact and it shows you all the rules it'll take into account those atomic ti's you click add and behind all this is a very complex very cool spl builder right so you didn't have to write a single line if you didn't want to but if you're an SPL ninja, you really know what you're doing and you want to get in there and fine tune it, you can also do that. And again, immediate gratification because you can click open and save search. So this is something that I think is just full of value for big socks where you have a ton of rules deployed. And the next phase after tuning those rules and getting a lot of value out of them is stitching them together in these more comprehensive stories and really finding those threats that can sometimes lurk across and in between the cracks that some of our detections have. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, hope you got uh, a little bit of something out of this and appreciate your time. Thanks.